Hi, my name is Drew, call sign AC3DS. And I'm Benjamin. And today we are going to make a wire dipole antenna. A simple antenna that would be a good starter antenna for anyone that is just beginning into the hobby and is looking to create something uh, to put up pretty quickly, pretty easily without a lot of fuss. Okay. So what we're going to do, and, and in order to make this antenna, what you're going to need is a few basic things. You're going to need some sort of a center insulator, uh, which is going to land up having a connection on the end. This is an SO239 connection, providing you're using a standard, uh, a standard type of ham radio wire, which in this case we are. Um, this is RG8U, but you could use RG8X. Most uh, ham radio cables are going to have this. PL 239, You're also going to need some wire. And today we're gonna to use this pet safe. Uh, this is actually for a, uh, an electric fence uh, project that we did a long, long time ago. And this is a solid core 20 gauge wire, which is not ideal for this type of project, but it is ridiculously cheap. For 500 feet, I think it's like $30. Uh, if you had another type of wire, you could use that. Uh, in this case, I also have here a 12 gauge stranded wire, but 500 feet of this is $80, 500 feet of this is $30, so there's definitely a difference. Um, and then you're gonna need something for the ends of those wires. These are called dog bone insulators and these will just allow you to tie off the ends of the, of the antenna to wire or to, to rope that will get then attached to a tree, uh, and in our case, a tree and, you know. Yeah, a, a, an upstairs window. An upstairs window in our house. And that's really it. I mean, that's really all that you need. So what's the difference between these two? Why is this one so much more expensive? So the 12, grade, the 12 gauge stranded wire is thicker Mm -hmm. um, which in our case would land up meaning that if, if, you, if we use this, we would have uh, better access to the bandwidth in terms of it would cover a wider swath of the band that we ultimately make the antenna for. Uh, not a whole lot, but enough. I mean, when you're talking about really small amounts in the grand scheme of things, it, 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 would, it would add to it. So that would actually be better. This is also nicer because of the fact that it is stranded, and so it's going to hold up a lot better if you're, you know, taking it down or trying to flex it. Um, you know, with a solid core wire, you could easily land up with a kink in the wire and a, and a break inside of this PVC jacket, and you might not even know that you have the break on the inside. So, I mean, it works fine if you're really careful with it and you're, you know, conscious about what you're doing with it, but, um, uh, generally the stranded would be a better choice. Okay. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to, uh, we need to, to take our wire, we need to roll it out, we need to, to get our total length for each of the two legs of the, uh, of the wire dipoles. How do we figure that out? So what you do is you take the frequency that you want, right? In this mm -hmm. case, we're gonna shoot for 20 meters, which the end of the 20 meter, um, technician area, actually 20 meter would be general, the end of the 20 meter general is going to be, I believe it's 14.225 megahertz, and then you take 468 and divide that by the frequency. So 468, mm -hmm. I've actually already done the math, 468 divided by 14.225 comes out to be roughly 32 feet, we're going to say. Okay, 32, 33 feet, somewhere in that range. And then uh, after that, and, and I'll get the exact number and put it up on the screen, but then what you're gonna do is you're gonna divide that number in half because half of that goes to one side and half goes to the other. Because we're splitting it up. Right, exactly. The total length is that 32 and a half, 33 feet, right? And then the, each leg is 16 and a half-ish feet yeah. on each side. Okay. All right, so we're gonna do 16 feet. So this table is three feet long. Uh, so we're gonna just land up doing six of these. That's gonna give us 18 feet. And that's gonna give us a little bit of extra to work with. All 
All right, now let's do our second wire run here. All right, okay. go ahead and uh, go ahead and strip that for us, please. Perfect. Good job. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to, I'm just going to loop it through here uh, just so that way actually I'm going to go up through it once and come back around and I'm just doing this to again, take some of the tension off of the line. So the post itself is not connected to the, uh, to this connector. It's, and why is that? Yeah, the post is just giving us an easy way of being able to connect oh. the two things together. So what we do is we slide this wire on. Let's do the, uh, the flat and then the lock. Flat, lock washer, and the nut. Go ahead, yep, and tighten that thing down. All right, so. Inch yep, off of this one. Yep, strip that. Turn it down this way a little bit so we can see what you're doing here. Perfect, good job. Okay. Right. Now we're just feeding it up through. Again, back through it again. So repeat the same process. Yep, just repeating the same process. There's no special knot that you're, you're doing here, right? No, I, as you well know, I, I don't know any special knots. That is, that is squarely in your domain. Get it square, square, square knot, get it. Okay. <laughs> okay, go ahead and tighten that down. Okay, very good. All right, so now we have both sides of our wire dipole, excellent. And now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to tie off the ends, tie them off to the dog, the dog bone. And we're going to leave quite a bit here. We're going to say maybe like nine inches or so okay. outside that we're going to wrap then around itself. And there you have it. That is a wire dipole antenna. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this outside. We're going to attach our feed line to it here. I'll be climbing uh, a tree. Yep, Benjamin's going to climb a tree, and then we're going to attach it. So we'll show you what that looks like putting it up uh, over our garage area. And the total height that we're going to have is maybe only about maybe about 12 feet or so above ground level. So okay. we'll give it a try. All right, so now we need to just attach the power cord to the opposite end of the dog bone insulator. And so now, here, you want to tie that off for us? Well done, because it works. All right, that's one side. Now let's do the other. Actually, how about how about if you go and put this up in the tree? Okay, I'm gonna have to have this end. You know, you know. All right, so with this end done, we'll put the other side of it up in the tree. So let's okay. walk that out. So we have the antenna hooked up and we are ready to start testing. So we're going to go ahead and turn the radio on.
All right. So we are hearing plenty. We're seeing plenty across the scope here. And so as far as a receiving antenna, it seems to be working just fine. Now the question is, will it tune? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to a spot in the band that is not, does not seem to be being used at the moment and maybe someplace close to, we, we had created this for uh, 14,225. So let's go off of 14,225 and we'll, we'll take it down a bit so that it's not quite on frequency. Let's go ahead and try it. Pretty good. Really good. We're at less than 1.25. So on the SWR, so we are, we're golden right here. Let me just try up higher one more spot first. Two nuts. A little bit higher, closer to 1.25, but still perfectly fine. 14,267. Try that. Is this frequency in use? Is this frequency in use? CQ, CQ, CQ. This is AC3DS calling CQ. Kilo Echo Zero Sierra Tango Tango. Kilo Echo Zero Sierra Tango Sierra Tango Tango. Thank you so much. A very, very strong signal here in Erie, Pennsylvania. Hey, Roger, Roger. Thank you for the good report. I'm uh, running 100 watts through a double bazooka about 35 feet off the ground, so pretty happy to hear that I'm making it into Erie. You are 5'5", five, 5'5", five, five, five with some QSB. Um, not surprising, the wind here is just ripping along at 30 to 40 miles an hour, so we've gotten a lot of fade coming in and out, but I've got you good enough to make contact. Back to you. Yes, Roger that. Uh, where are you located? I am in a little town called Guthrie Center, Iowa. 60 miles west of Des Moines. Uh, well, we are we are just testing out a new antenna here. Yeah, not not too bad. I, like I said, about five five. It's a, a little quiet with uh, some QSB on the on the band today, but no complaints. It's always always good to get on 20 meters. And great job on the antenna. I think uh, you and, and your son, you're certainly making it out here to Iowa, which is good stuff for 80 watts. Back to you. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for the report. Hey, question for you. Um, we are actually recording this because we are uh, actually putting together a video to put up on YouTube. Would it be all right with you if we use this clip for in the in the video? If not, that's perfectly okay, and I will delete it. Oh, not a problem at all. Perfectly acceptable to use this audio clip for your video, and I do appreciate you asking permission. That's very kind of you. Uh, yep, absolutely. Right here, I'm running an ICOM 7100 at 100 watts. Uh, can I ask you what kind of radio you're using? Uh, yes. So, well, first, thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Um, and we are running an ICOM 7300. So, yeah, fine business. The audio sounds very, very good. Your voice is clear. And, of course, the 7300 has some great audio quality. So, excellent work uh, on your part. I'll uh, say 73 and let you make some more contact. AC3DS from KE0STT. Well, thank you everybody for watching. We hope that you enjoyed this. Uh, we had a good time making the antenna. It was a success. We were able to make two contacts, one in Iowa and the other Michigan. No, not Michigan. No, not Michigan, Mississippi. Mississippi, yes. One of the many other M's. And uh, we, yeah, I mean, big shout out to KE0STT Robert in Guthrie Center, Iowa, about 700 miles away or so from us for being our first contact and for allowing us to be able to use that clip here in this video. So thank you, Robert, for that. And we uh, hope that this was productive and we hope that you enjoyed this. And if so, please like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. So until then, bye.